Colorado Hills was very unique. It was born, hatched in like 1959, which is recent. Most towns evolve over many years and it's really hard to see how it comes together. Not here. The people that were part of it, a few of them, are still around and quite cogent. Uh, and, uh, and so we enjoy, I enjoy them and uh, uh, I wanted to take this year and focus on that and we're sort of taking a little uh, time out uh, because we're fast forwarding a little bit to get Betty in to talk about the library today because it's the 10th anniversary of the, uh, Elder, the opening of the El Dorado Hills Library which is a spectacular uh, story in the community. Uh, this is Betty January. She uh, was one of many people involved in uh, the formation of the El Dorado Hills Library and uh, the work it took to raise the funds to get it there. And she's done lots of other stuff in the community and uh, will not embarrass her by trying to uh, run down that list, but uh, uh, including uh, forming the Historical Society. So uh, thank you and I'll toss it off to her. Good morning. Um, I'm going to talk about what it took to build the library. And I'm going to present it to you in story form. It's got seven chapters and it has 13 heroes in this story. Uh, so with that, I'm going to start off with chapter one. Um, it all started uh, in February 1999. It was at a newcomer's community awareness meeting. Uh, I had joined newcomers, even though I moved here in 73. Uh, I had uh, joined that in the middle 90s, so I could play bridge. But I noticed all the people that moved into the community from other areas um, had kind of a, a different impression. Some thought that they were in Sacramento County. Some thought that El Dorado Hills was a city. Uh, so I thought maybe we should start a community awareness group within the newcomers, which I did. And it was sparsely attended. We might get one person. We might get really excited when five came. But this particular um, meeting, February of 1999, our first heroine, our first hero, uh, came to this meeting. Uh, she, Claudia Lowe, she was the uh, library commissioner for our library zone. And she was telling us that um, the lease, the joint lease with the county and the high school was going to expire in a few months and she felt that this community was ready for its own freestanding library, not associated with the uh, school because there were many problems, parking, uh, uh, staff, hours, everything with, uh, with the high school. Um, so anyway, she was uh, asking us if we would explore leasing another building. So I told her yes, that we would uh, look into that and at our next community awareness meeting, we would uh, discuss this. So we did, we went out and looked and found a building and governors that might suffice. Uh, but uh, in, that, in that, those years, uh, that was not easy to find uh, a building. So anyway, at the next meeting that we had in March, uh, I had invited um, Jeannie Amos, our library director for the county, and Sam Bradley, who was the uh, District 1 supervisor, to come to the meeting to tell us give us more information on, on this. So they came and uh, we started discussing this, uh, what was available and so forth about leasing. And pretty soon our next hero emerged in the form of Naomi Hemmelsbach. She was sitting there and she jumped up and she said, why should we lease the building? Let's build our library. And with that, the enthusiasm came and uh, uh, we kept talking now about building. What does it take to build a library? Uh, so we, at, at that point, if we then started to build, that's a community project, not a newcomer's project. So we would have to take it out of newcomers and form our own separate group. So we decided to do that and we met a couple of weeks later and formed 
the citizens for an El Dorado Hills Library. Uh, can, we, can we take a little quick time out for a, a, a breather? Yeah, <laughs> just a, little, a couple questions. So, uh, what year are we? 1999. Okay. This is spring of 1999, February, March, and April. And so, uh, El Dorado Hills is here, and we've got maybe if we say there's like 42,000 now, there's what, 30,000 or something? Then? 20,000? No, no, it wouldn't even be that. Maybe 20,000. Got it. Uh, and all, but it wasn't, uh, wasn't that big. And was there any discussion yeah. about what this might cost? Well, that's reforming uh, this, yeah. this group, Citizens for an Old Red Hills Library. And that, the first thing we did was um, uh, get officers. Well, because I was calling the meetings and uh, it was at my house. <laughs> you never had a chance. <laughs> so I ended up as the chairman, but we uh, did our, our uh, officers. And then we said, what are our goals? Here's uh, 15,000, uh, there's one man. Uh, and we had no idea, what does it take to build a library? So we're thinking, well, we need a site, uh, we need money, and eventually we're going to need a plan. So we thought we'd go down the line, first the site. So we went around looking for places where we could build. Uh, Ginny had told us that the county had three acres at the visitor center and uh, that that was available. Well, we didn't know whether that was central uh, to the community because we hadn't built below 50 yet. And uh, so we looked around. Well, all those properties we looked at cost money, but the county property didn't, and this was a county library. So we thought, that's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, build there. Then we found out that there was already a plan for that three acres. And the plan was that where the library is now, that was designated for the senior center. And the little strip that faced Silver Valley was designated for a library. Actually, it was designated. The lawn was now a lawn. <laughs> that, that little area there. And then uh, the uh, <coughs> sheriff's office and other county were along the fence line that uh, went along the, the back there. But uh, anyway, that was, uh, we didn't think that that was quite right. So we went to, um, Moni Gilmore and Norm Rowett and said, you know, that we really wanted that corner uh, property for many reasons. Well, we locked horns on that, so it ended up on the floor of the Board of Supervisors. And so we went up there and we uh, presented uh, our case. Number one, if the senior center was there and the library was over here, you had seniors parking here, but you had children coming on bicycles and everything through that parking lot and we thought that was a safety issue. That was number one. Number two, the little stretch we had limited our library to a small library. Uh, and then the, uh, the other um, was the facing west that sunlight would hit the building. That's not good on books or anything unless we just didn't put windows in it. So we had all these arguments, and we presented those to the board. Well, unfortunately, that day at the board, there was only three members there. Mark Nielsen, uh, Sam Bradley, and I think it was David Salerno. To pass anything, you have to have the three votes. So it would, all three would have to vote there. Well, it was well known that Sam didn't always get the cooperation from the rest of the board. So Sam made the motion to table this until the next supervisor meeting, thinking more people would be there, there would be more of a chance to pass it. So it was seconded, and uh, then for discussion. Well, one of our group, um, Barbara Charlton, who was a retired Sac Sacramento State Science Librarian, uh, couldn't contain herself. She jumped up and ran up to the podium and she shook her finger at them and she said, 
She said, you have all the information you need in front of you to make a decision, and there's no further arguments or uh, suggestions or whatever, you know, uh, you, you are paid to make these decisions. <laughs> and anyway, uh, Mark Nielsen, who was back like this, came forward like that and looked at her, and a smile went from ear to ear uh, on him. And while well, she's shaking her fist at him. <laughs> and uh, so he made the motion to rescind the previous motion. And then he made the motion to pass that we would get that site. And it was voted through to nothing, and we did get the site. This also ended up on the front page of the Mountain Democrat. <laughs> the title was Feisty Librarian Gets Covenant Spot for Everybody Else <laughs> Library. And it's in our scrapbooks. We have these scrapbooks over here that you can go through and you'll see all these, these things. Well, now we have the site. Uh, so the next thing we needed to do was get money. Uh, enter our next hero, Joe Harn. Joe, the a popular what? villain right now. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we're working on for the hero and the anti-hero. Uh, he that's what's great a, about this story. He was a hero for the library. Definitely a hero for the library. Anyway, he lived here in, in uh, El Dorado Hills at the time. And he had been following our progress uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the citizens for uh, El Dorado Hills Library. So he contacted us and he said uh, he wanted to uh, make an appointment with Parker Development Company to talk about money. So we met with Sam Miller, who was the uh, manager at that time, and we talked to him, found out that in their Miller Roots, that they had a provision to support the library. So Sam Miller would have been Kirk Bones' predecessor? Ex exactly, okay. exactly. And so, but it was based on a, a percentage, and uh, at that time, the percentage would give us probably only a million dollars. We were asking for two million. And they said, well, the projection <coughs> would be two million more uh, plus, you know, in the future. So they decided at that point to uh, give us two million dollars. They promised us the two million dollars. They didn't hand it over Park, to Park us. Parker Development did. Parker Development, mm -hmm. yes. And can we, we, sorry to keep interrupting, Betty, but uh, you need to breathe. And uh, I wanted to fill in. Mellow Roos, uh, for those of you that don't uh, have the benefit of knowing intimately what that is, like paying everyone, uh, <laughs> is uh, a bond measure uh, that is floated by developers to get money to build infrastructure. And uh, it, you normally think of roads and water pipes and stuff, but things like community facilities, uh, like libraries, are actually on the list but they may be a little bit below the pipes and the roads, which is the negotiation you're talking about, about mm -hmm. how much of this money. Mm -hmm. How much of this money. Right. May I comment? It's mellow roofs for new things like uh, landscape, roadways, and stuff, not for uh, sewer, water, and streets. It had to be a new function, yeah. which the library was. In 1911 and 15 bonds were what were used for all Got the old it. stuff. Got it. Thank you, Art. So here we have now uh, our um, uh, Bill Parker as our other hero. Okay, next on the heroes list, uh, we were meeting in my house, and this was not a good place for a public, you know, community uh, place. So I went to Wayne Lowry. He's our next hero, and I asked him if we could use the facilities there at CSD. We had no money, so we couldn't rent it or anything like that. Uh, he said, by all means, because this was a community project. So he gave us this back room, uh, which is now the offices, where we could meet. Later, we met in the main room of the pavilion. Uh, we also had access to the patio for several book sales that we held uh, there. So he, uh, anything we wanted, we'd ask him, and we got. So he is our next uh, hero. <laughs> Now the next um, hero, uh, I was at Rayleigh's and a gentleman walked up to me and said, uh, introduced himself and he said that he was from the firm Murray and Downs architect firm in Placerville and if there was anything that they could do to help us, they certainly would. 
So I went back and told the gang <laughs> about this. And we had collected $5,000 from book sales and donations and so forth. So here we had $5,000. So we decided to hire Murray and Downs architect firm to draw up the plans for the library. I worked with him on the El Dorado Forum Board of Directors and he was such a civic-minded person. He, um, Murray and Downs did almost all of the school buildings because they were able to um, master the requirements from the state architect's office and for a lot of architects that was just really too much of a bother but they were so uh, um, dedicated to our county's children schools and libraries both of them uh, we went up to uh, charlie downs uh, proudly presented him five thousand dollars and hired him to build uh, to the plans, not realizing that he got maybe a minimum of 80,000 and well into the hundred thousands to do exactly what we were asking him to do for 5,000. He never cracked a smile or nothing, he just said yes, that he would be very happy to. So he assigned one of his architects to work with us to design the library. So Jeannie Amos, uh, Barbara Charlton, Martha Philippides, and I met with this architect for weeks and weeks until we got the plan for our library for $5,000. <laughs> uh -huh. So that is our, that, he was uh, our hero too. Um, the next um, thing that happened, um, uh, there was the uh, election, new supervisor election. And uh, a couple of people in district, running for district one, had used the library as a uh, campaign. Um, one, the one that won, our hero, Rusty Dupre, had put on his flyer, his mailer, that he supported the library in El Dorado Hills. So after he took office, I invited him to our meeting and I introduced him to the group and then I pushed the flyer over under him and pointed to it and I said, Mr. Dupre, did you mean what you said in your flyer as we made a promise? And he burst into a big grin and he looked around and he says, I said it and I mean it. And he became one of our staunchest, and I will cover that a little later, uh, supporters. Uh, so then at the same time they were redrawing the districts and it turned out that uh, District 2 took part of uh, Park, Village, and uh, Serrano. Remember when that happened? And that was Helen Bauman. So enter our next heroine, Helen Bauman. She jumped on board to help us with this library. So we had a trio now, Joe Harn, Rusty Dupre, and Helen Bauman working toward the, the library. And I can say in all honesty, that if it wasn't for that trail, we wouldn't have made it. That will come up later. Okay, now we're going to kind of backtrack a little bit. Uh, it turned out that uh, we were citizens for uh, uh, El Dorado Hills Library, but we needed nonprofit status, we needed a name. So we approached the El Dorado Hills Friends of the Library and asked if we could merge with them. We would certainly swell the ranks <laughs> and all, and then work together. They said yes, so we joined them, and but we maintained the title, uh, the El Dorado Hills Friends of the Library and the Citizens for uh, El Dorado Hills Library for at least a year until people would think, know that it was one group, not two groups, going for the library. So now, um, we had the site, we had uh, two million dollars, uh, we had the plan. Okay, now we needed more money. We couldn't build a library on two million dollars. The plan showed that it would cost in, in excess of six million. So we were a bit short. Enter our next hero. 
uh, Mike McDougall of MJM Properties. Uh, he had been involved in some of our meetings right along, so he was well aware. Well, they were building um, what became Blackstone and Valley View, and they had Tim fees, I think it's Tim fees, that they had to give to the county for the interchange, the Silver Valley interchange. Uh, and it was to the amount of $22 million. So what they did was make it $24 million, and then $2 million off the top would go toward the building of the El Dorado Hills Library. So now we had $4 million. Then there was a, a county employee that was searching for grants. He found a grant for $750,000 uh, for library construction. He applied for it, we got it. So now all we lacked was $2 million. We felt that this was something the county should uh, come up with because they had done it for Cameron Park. Uh, they should do it, you know, for us. So now we are going to approach the county to come up with $2 million. So we all, we, we were on the agenda uh, for this particular Tuesday and uh, we had our buttons on which every time we went up to the uh, uh, Board of Supervisors, we always wore these buttons, the yellow buttons, and there was, we were carpooling up in mass. There would be quite a lot of us that would be going up there to ask for this. We were going to ask for three million, hoping we would get two million. Rusty, Helen, and Joe devised this Community Enhancement Fund. Do you remember the Community Enhancement Fund? <coughs> Sounds like something that some politician would make up. <laughs> <laughs> and at that particular year, it was $15 million that came up the hill that they didn't know what to do with. I mean, they hadn't expected it. So here's this $15 million. Well, the um, unions had their eye on it. So uh, Joe thought that he could take um, eight million of that, put it in this community enhancement fund that would be divided among the five districts for community projects that they normally would not be able to fund. But off the top, two million of it would, would go to the El Dorado Hills Library construction. So, uh, brilliant, I thought. <laughs> so anyway. Um, and that was tobacco money or something? Was um, there was some talking about the tobacco money, too, but that, some... that went off. So this was just a, a regular is, old surplus? Yeah, this was the surplus. So <laughs> anyway, um, I, those. <laughs> <laughs> I told the, the gang, you know, watch and listen. So Rusty Dupre presented this community enhancement fund uh, project. Uh, and it, that's when he turned uh, library babes. He dubbed us the library babes, which we love that title. Respectfully. Yep, that respectfully, <laughs> yes. Don't try this at home. <laughs> <laughs> I, I carry that title proudly, but it, he, uh, and he presented it. And he said, off the top, this two million, two million goes to the library babes for mm -hmm. the, for the uh, uh, construction. Well, then the rest would be divided among the different districts for their projects. Now, can they refuse that? If they refuse that, their constituents would probably string them up. Anyway, it was immediately brought to a vote in the past five to nothing. So we had now our money. We, went, we erupted. In fact, we, it, we ended up, they adjourned temporarily uh, for 10 minutes. Well, we all went out in the lobby and, and just hurrayed and, uh, and everything. We were just so excited. And, uh, but it wasn't over. We were the only project that of receiving this community enhancement fund, fund money that had strings attached to it. They said that we wouldn't get the money unless uh, we could pass a substantial lab block library tax to maintain it. Hmm. Now the county does fund uh, part of it, but uh, uh, for the size of the library that we were uh, going to build, that uh, uh, we would need the uh, 
more than $12 a parcel, which was what our library tax was hmm. at that time. So we went back to the drawing board. What were we going to do about this? This means that we had to pass a tax. Do you know how hard it is to pass a tax? <laughs> <laughs> so we, um, Helen Bellman had uh, a friend who was a pollster, and he was putting out a, a survey or something, and we talked him into putting in um, would you favor the library in El Dorado Hills? And if so, uh, how much would you pay in the library tax to support it? It came through where easily we could with $25. Uh, we preferred 30, but we decided to go with the 25 because that we probably could win. So we hurriedly put this measure out on the ballot we didn't get it right the first time. We had to actually correct it at another, because uh, we forgot about apartments. So we cured the apartment thing in the later, uh, the later uh, vote. But anyway, we got it in in the nick of time. Uh, but then the holidays were on us. And in those years, the primary was held in March. So the primary that year was the first Tuesday in March. Uh, I told the gang that uh, the holidays were on us, no use campaigning during the holidays, but we would uh, hit the ground running right after the first of the year. Uh, so, but we only had seven weeks to pass this, uh, to get people to vote for this tax. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but these guys won't interrupt you, so I have to. Uh, did anybody, did you have any political moxie? Did anybody in your group ever ever done anything like this before? No. <laughs> Making it up. No, no, we made it up as we went along. But we had some good uh, uh, people leading us. So but somebody to tell you that 25 might fly when 30 wouldn't. <laughs> uh, yes, that came clear on the poll, actually. The poll, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So anyway, uh, Helen Bellman came through again. She had a political consultant friend who did a lot of uh, political campaigns for the state of California. Uh, who she had gone to high school with. And so she called on him, and she said, uh, would you help us with the library here? We can't pay you, uh, would you help us? And he said, uh, certainly. He said, but he said, you will have to pay for postage and materials. And Joe Horn said, no problem. He was gonna take care of getting the money to pay uh, for all that. So we had a consultant and he dedicated one of his people just to us to, for this campaign. And I'm sure people got tired of the flyers and <laughs> everything that, that went out uh, on this because they really went into it full hog. And I probably was talking to him almost daily. I found out that I had a fax thing on my printer. So we were faxing back and forth and, and all. And uh, it, it just went, um, the campaign was going good. We did have some opposition um, and all. It's all played out in letters to the editor in the village life um, through that whole time. We had uh, parts of Cameron Park, one, one person was right across from the current, the current library, uh, several in Shingle Springs, and then of course Latrobe, but Latrobe I think was already in our, our zone. But Latrobe would be a, a problem because the ranches out there had uh, divided a lot of their properties uh, into parcels. That would mean if they had six parcels at six times 25, you know, they weren't uh, too willing, you know. So we knew we would probably lose them. But to get the rest of Latrobe, this is what we did. Elder Library for Elder Hills and Latrobe. Uh -huh. Hey, can we pitch it to Art and, and see if he has any reflections of, of how that was all received? Because I've got six parcels of the old town side of Latrobe, little lots, and only one of them has improvements on it. And I pay <coughs> six times whatever the. Right, because it didn't matter. <coughs> but I don't remember that there's just not that many people down there to get very active about anything. Uh, you did. Except the pancake <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> uh, the other thing that we uh, had to overcome besides these pockets 
Uh, people thought that what we were proposing was $25 on top of the 12. Um, and it wasn't. We were just increasing it by $13. Mm -hmm. So um, I used the analogy of a, of a hamburger, a Coke, and fries per year that would be added to support uh, the library. And it worked. And people understood that if we weren't adding $25, we were merely increasing it by $13. So then, now we had the community uh, that we were um, uh, campaigning within the community. Probably one of the most rewarding things in this whole thing was the support, the overwhelming support of the community for this project. Children, mothers, uh, scouts, uh, kids, schools, everybody was calling us to, uh, what can they do? Well, we had all, tons of flyers that uh, the political uh, firm had given us. And so they, these kids, mothers with strollers, everything went door to door. Everybody got a flyer uh, about uh, Measure L. Uh, it was just overwhelming. And then these, we had 200 of these made, long signs, and then some big ones. Well, that's all we had. We didn't have time to make any more because we only had six, seven weeks uh, to do this. People were stealing them out of the front, the front <laughs> lawns and racing and putting them in their front lawns. They were that much in demand. And I saw a little, uh, and they were always asking us for more lawn signs, but we didn't have time to make any more. So they just kept getting stolen and moving <laughs> around. When there was too many in one particular neighborhood, we would go and ask to move in another. But uh, it, it was uh, beautiful. I saw one little kid, uh, I was driving through the neighborhood, and he had one of these signs under his arm racing toward home. I figured by night it was on his wall. <laughs> but anyway, it, it, was, it was wonderful. And our friends of the library, uh, we had many that volunteered from the community you know, to help us too. But like the phone calls that Cecilia is saying, um, we worked very hard. And the day of election, uh, we had broke up into teams and we checked to make sure everybody would have a ride to the polls, you know, the traditional things that you do. And uh, we worked hard all day long. At 8 o'clock, we all, our teams, all met at the pizza place there in, in Barcadero, where we were going to watch the uh, election returns. On the, on the television. We ordered the pizza and drinks and we were joy, just jovial and uh, loud <laughs> and uh, celebrating, you know, because another thing. Then the returns started to come in. And the more we watched, the quieter we got because at 9.30 we were losing. It was like 53% for it. We needed 66 and two thirds. Well, we were now a, a very silent group and all. And so I told the gang, I said, let's go home, get a good night's sleep, and then we're going to have to campaign for the November election. So we all went home. And I couldn't sleep, but finally I did go to sleep, and I woke up about 5 in the morning, turned on the television, and I'm watching the results. And at the bottom, you know, where they put that little thing that goes across, I thought I saw Measure L, El Dorado, counting measure L, and it looked like it was 70-something, but I missed it, you know, and I thought, well, that can't be, you know, or anything, so I sat there waiting for it to come up again, and sure enough, it was like 70%, and I thought, this, so I went in on the computer and into our uh, county website, into elections, not all the precincts were completely counted yet, but it was 74%. It stayed that way. We passed it, 74%. To say elation, <laughs> I called everybody, you know, to tell them that uh, we had passed it. One at nine o'clock, I called Craven Alcott up at uh, county level, yeah. and I said to her that I said we passed the measure L. Uh, let's get the library built. We're burning daylight. And that became our cry because nothing happened. 
uh, months went by, nothing happened. It was holed up in county council for some reason. I, I never did understand exactly why. Finally, in August, uh, they appointed a, a county architect to uh, take over this project. The first thing she told us, she said, this is a county project. The county is in control now. She said, we don't have to do what you have done. She did keep the um, base, she kept the plan, the construction plan, but she flipped it. Now we had it on the other side so that we could build out on that little strip that's along the Silva Valley. Uh, but now with it flipped, we couldn't do that. So uh, that was our first setback and there were many others that we asked for and we did not get anything that, that we had asked for. But eventually, um, the plan uh, came together and all, and uh, uh, we made peace uh, with them, <laughs> with her and all. And uh, uh, construction was going to start. So we started planning the ground breaking uh, festivities. Uh, Parker loaned us Eric, who was his event planner. And he um, had this big book that um, I thought was 15 feet tall. It wasn't, it's probably about eight feet, but it was up on a stand under the gazebo. And this was taking place at the visitor center. So um, he has to go to another meeting. So, <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, uh, I hit it when I... So he got together with all of us. Uh, uh, there'll be pictures in here of us uh, making this pole with books uh, dangling from it. was really <coughs> styrofoam. We just took the covers of books and pasted it on. Uh, we made big books like this to go on a stand. We'll see that in here also where um, uh, when you put these giant books on, it actually formed the library, like a house. Uh, um, and each person that came up with that book, uh, the title of that book reflected their personality. Mm -hmm. Like Dave Solero from uh, South Lake Tahoe, his was named Man of the Lake, referring to Lady of the Lake and all. Uh, and uh, t uh, Rusty had to do with fire. And, uh, it, but every, all the titles reflected the person that uh, put it on all the supervisors. Uh, and, and we, um, uh, we had um, the school children that sang. We had, uh, it was a great program. A lot of people uh, spoke. Grant Napier, who was the uh, announcer for the Kings, uh, he lives here in El Dorado Hills. He was our master of ceremonies. And, and all, and um, uh, I had contacted uh, Laura Bush's office in Washington, D.C., and had invited her to come. She was a librarian, and she sent the nicest letter, and there was a lot of communication. Hey, Laura. Uh, <coughs> and so her Thank letter. Laura. <laughs> yeah. And her letter was read at this, too. At the conclusion of the ceremonies, why that, that book in the gazebo was up so high on this platform is because there were pipes under here that uh, when it was shot off, <laughs> streamers and confetti shot out <coughs> over the top of the uh, audience. Scared the heck out of us. It was a big <laughs> but here comes all of this confetti and everything out over us. And then we went over to the site. We had shovels with the uh, uh, spray gold. And <coughs> so we had the shuttle thing and everything. So that, then the construction began. Uh, when construction was uh, finished, we were planning, Friends of the Library, planning the uh, grand opening. We were going to have two openings. Uh, one would be a formal thing the night before. The other, the next day, would be uh, the whole community festivities, families, children, and everything. And in our coffers, we only had $8,000 to spend on these two openings, and we figured it would take us $13,000. So they sent me out to find 
and the other 5,000 and some wine. Uh, well, uh, Rusty and Joe, of course, um, I'm assuming that they were involved in this because I was sent to Mike McDougall's office, walked in, and Joe was there, and so was uh, Rusty, and so I'd sit there. And I had been long friends with Mike McDougall because he's into horses and I was a horse person too. So I went up to Mike, you know, and I said, well, I'm here to ask for money. <laughs> we need $5,000 and two, at least two cases of wine. Would you do that? And he said, no problem. We'll do that, and he'll do that. He said, come at the first of the week. I'll have the check cut, and you can pick it up. I said, okay. Then I get a call from Rusty. And Rusty said, Betty, I want you over at Mike's office first thing Monday morning. The check is waiting for you, and you're going to be surprised. So I went over, walked in, and Mike is there, you know, and uh, he said, I've got the check for you, and he hands me the check. But he also tells me that there's eight cases of wine for us. And then I look at the check. I stare at that check, and I can't believe it. I look at it and look at it. It was made out for $25,000. And he said to, to me, he says, I want the friends to put on the biggest and best <laughs> uh, opening. And uh, uh, then I went to the meeting, and uh, the friends meeting, and uh, when I was on the agenda to, to say that I got the money and everything, I passed that check around. <laughs> nobody could believe it, and we did. We put on uh, an excellent and grand openings and all. So I want to uh, say, um, I want to go over, again, my heroes list, because there's some others added to it. Uh, Claudia Lowe, who uh, kick-started this. Naomi Hemsbach, who got up and said, let's build a library. Joe Harn, Bill Parker, Wayne Lowry, Charlie Downs, Rusty Dupre, Helen Bauman, Mike McDougall, the original, uh, Citizens for uh, Eldorado Hills Library and the Eldorado Hills Friends of the Library members. Mm -hmm. they, these are, they're all heroes. Uh, special attention to Barbara Charlton and Margaret Philippides because I never went anywhere without those two. Uh, one of them uh, would uh, keep me on the straight and narrow and the other one kept the minutes to let me know what was said and what I said and what the conclusion was. So I never went anywhere without them. And of course I would, like everybody does, I would say uh, thank you to my uh, late husband because in seven years he never complained once. And he had good reason to because I was busy all the time. So I look back on my library babe era with the fondest of memories and the little library that could did, and that's my my talk. Here's oh, the first library. Just oh, yeah. hold your hand up. Okay. Anybody want to talk about it, Wayne? Well, the first library actually, his name was or the library was Kent, and it was down there at that uh, where it actually it was a park. Uh, a lot of people got upset when they developed it into a uh, commercial zone, but it was always zoned commercial and it was just a temporary use. But that was, but that was, that park, wasn't this governor's? That was governor's. It was, uh, it was right where the sheriff's, uh, well. The more importantly, right where the village life used to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. exactly. All that was, that was just uh, the A-frame, which was, uh, right. I think was actually originally a real estate office and it came it into a, I think it uh, was before that as yeah. well. Uh, there were a lot of homes. Yeah. What year is that? Well, I've got, actually got a picture of a kite contest, and my kid's probably about seven, so that's probably 45 years ago, wow. at least. Yeah. This, this could have been the 60s or any time before yeah, it moved to about 60s. I mean, it took a little bit of doing to get it so, out of here into Oak Ridge. Uh, I've got little bits of that story. Anybody that knows the rest of it, I'd love to hear it. but. Apparently, uh, it took some lobbying to school and county to get uh, the Oak Ridge project expanded to make room for a library. And, uh, oh, I was told to ask uh, about the stone facade. Wasn't there something special about the stone yes. or something? Yes, uh, 
the how the county got the um, those three acres. It was a, a an agreement with Tony Mansour when he owned it, and the county wanted uh, uh, some land to put their offices on. So he made that arrangement that they would have, and they could pick what, however that they wanted, they picked three acres. So when Tony sold it to Parker, that agreement went with it, but it was a sunset clause. So it had to be, if anybody, anything was built on that three acres, uh, the building had to be a uh, single story if it faced along Silver Valley. It had to be no larger than 15,000 square feet, and it had to blend, blend in architecturally with the visitor center, which was that stone. Uh, we the Serrano about Visitor Center up the, there. The Serrano the Visitor area. Center, so that we got that. That's why we had to put that stone in, which is what makes it beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and we did get it increased to 16,000 square feet. And, uh, and all, but those were the, the restrictions on it. And Parker Company uh, had the last say so in the exterior of the building, not the interior, but the exterior. We've moved to the back of the library, which is actually the south side of the current building, uh, so that Betty can tell us uh, a little bit about some of the architectural features. Uh, and I guess uh, uh, this was an extended battle and there was a bunch of skirmishes and uh, this place got built because you won more than you lost. Uh, but I think you've got a story here about one that maybe you didn't win. Uh. <laughs> no, we didn't win this battle. Uh, one of the things that we had on the plan was that this area in back here was going to be a patio with doors coming out on the uh, side of the uh, a fireplace inside and then people could come out here and overlook the lake and read a book in comfort. Uh, it didn't happen. We were told that uh, there would be too much uh, theft um, although we said that we had ways to uh, handle that and all but we lost that battle. So here it is now it's a very pretty rose garden but we're missing this view over here so here's an example of another one of those skirmishes that actually held the project up for a couple of months i think it was betty uh what we're looking at a chimney here what was the problem the the problem was the size the width of the chimney uh, the county wanted a narrower chimney going all the way up. Uh, the plan that we had and what uh, uh, Mr. Parker was uh, wanting was that it would be wide at the base and then taper up narrow. Well, it was a standoff. Both the county stuck with their uh, design and uh, Parker stuck with his. So, uh, we decided then that uh, we would have a third party offer the solution. The solution would be to make it like it is now. It went up uh, the same width all the way up to the top. This was broke the standoff. It was agreed upon by the county and it was also agreed upon by uh, Parker. Uh, so we got this, which I think is very better than the other two proposals and we got the uh, project going again.